Revit Pure Basics is a beginner's course for Autodesk Revit that is made to be simple, fun, short, and efficient. To get your copy of Basics, go to revitpure.com basics or check the link in the video description. Welcome to this floor plan tutorial for Revit 2023. In this video, we will use Revit to strictly create floor plans. There won't be a focus on creating a BIM model for elevations, renderings, or 3D views, but strictly to quickly produce a floor plan. We created a floor plan template that you can use to follow along with this tutorial. Just check the links in the description below. The templates are available both in Metric and Imperial. You will also find an image of the completed project if you want to reproduce the floor plan in this exercise. Let's get going. Click on New to create a model. Click Browse to pick a custom template. In this case, we are using the template we are providing for free in the links. You will arrive to the Welcome page. In the Project Browser, double-click on the Level 1 Floor Plan view. In this view, you will see all the components that are included in the template. Most of these families are only two-dimensionals. If you need to create 3D views, consider using 3D families instead. You need to make sure that the levels are set up correctly. Go to the South Elevation view. We can select a level and adjust the value if you wish. For now, we'll keep it like this. Another important thing when starting a project is to locate the internal origin and place the model accordingly. In this view, the internal origin is represented by the arrow symbol over here. If you can't locate it in your view, Open the Visibility Graphics menu by going to the View tab or by using shortcut VG. Scroll down to the site. Expand the menu. Make sure the Internal Origin box is checked. Now we are ready to create walls. Go to the Architecture tab and select the Wall tool or use shortcut WA. In the Type selector, pick the correct wall type. In this case, we use the generic 300mm type. You can see that this wall goes from level 1 up to level 2. Now, click on the center of the internal origin to create the first wall. Click again to complete the segment. Press Escape once to break the chain wall creations and create another wall at the corner. Press Escape twice to exit the wall creation mode. There are multiple ways to create a layout. An interesting way to do it is to quickly create a layout using lines as references before creating the walls. Go to the Annotate tab and select the Detail Lines tool or use shortcut DL. Select the correct line type. In this case, we use a red line to easily differentiate between model elements and lines. Click once to start the line. Position the cursor in the correct direction and type in the dimension value. Complete the layout of the house using lines. Now, we will explore some ways to modify existing elements. When a wall is selected, you can drag the dot to adjust the boundaries. But my favorite tool is by far Align. You will find it in the Modify tab, but you should use shortcut AL. Type in AL, select the reference line, then click the line to adjust. We use it on this wall to adjust the boundary. Another useful tool is called Create Similar, which you can use by using shortcut CS. This will create another element using the same type category as the selected one. We use it to quickly create a bunch of other walls. When the walls are created, we use the Align tool to adjust their position to match the red line's layout. We use a similar technique to create walls for the garage. Now, select the Trim tool to adjust these two walls. Use shortcut TR then click on the two wall segments to extend or trim. Repeat this technique to complete the layout. It's time to create the interior wall's layout. This time we will use another way to do it. Pick the interior wall type. Create a rough version of the interior layout. Then use temporary dimensions to adjust the position. When a wall is selected, you will see these small blue dimensions around it. Change the dimension value to adjust the wall position. You can drag the small blue dots to modify the witness lines of the dimension. We use the technique to complete the layout. Let's fast forward a little bit. Walls are complete, it's now time to create doors. You'll find them in the Architecture tab or by using shortcut DR. 
select the simple door type. Simply click on the wall to create the door. Click on the blue arrows to flip the door around. You can also press spacebar to flip. These doors are too small. You need to create a new type. Select one of the door and click on Edit Type. Click on Duplicate and type in the values you want to use. Then adjust the width of the door and click on OK. The door will become larger. To quickly assign this new type to the existing doors, use the Match Type Properties tool by using shortcut MA. Click once on the reference doors, then click on the doors to adjust. You can use the temporary dimensions to adjust the position. Keep creating doors using the other families to complete the layout. We're going to fast forward a little bit. Time to create windows. The tool is located in the Architecture tab or by using shortcut WM. The process is similar to creating doors. Pick the correct type before creating each window. Again, we'll speed up the process a little bit. There is a window type missing, so you can duplicate an existing one and set new dimensions. Make adjustments to the window's position. Using the Align tool is the best way to do it. You can still see the red lines, so you should delete them. Make a cross selection. In the bottom right of the screen, you will find the Filter tool. Deactivate all categories except the red lines. Click on OK and Delete. Now it's time to create components in the plan. You can copy and paste components from the library below in the view. Another great tool to use is Create Similar. Select the component and use shortcut CS. Your cursor will show a preview of the element. Hit spacebar to flip the component. For some elements, you will see blue arrows you can use to adjust the dimensions. We use this technique to create a little table in the living room. The Align tool can be very helpful to position elements in an accurate way. Some components will have to be hosted on walls. For example, the toilet family has to be located on a wall. Let's fast forward a little bit while all the components are being placed. Now you need to create the kitchen countertops. For this part, we will be using model lines. You will find this tool in the Architecture tab or by using shortcut LI. Select the line type. In this case, we'll use a thin line defined at 0.1 mm. Create the lines to represent the countertop. Now we will use the offset tool to create the kitchen island. Use shortcut OF, then set the value in the options bar. Click on the line to create the offset. Repeat the same process to complete the island. Switch the line type to a dash type. In this case, we use the overhead type. It's time to create a floor. 
The tool is located in the Architecture tab. Select the correct type, then adjust the purple boundaries. Remove the location of the stairs from the boundaries. To save some time, we use the Split tool to cut this boundary line into segments. Use shortcut SL to use Split. Then use the Trim tool to join the lines together. Another useful tool in this situation is called Thin Lines. The tool is located in the View tab or use shortcut TL. The thickness of all lines will be reduced to a single pixel. This doesn't affect views when they are printed. This is useful when you have lines that are close together. Click the green check to complete. Oh, just realized there is a car missing in the garage. Let's create some stairs. Select the tool in the Architecture tab. Select the Residential Stairs type. Pay close attention to the properties. You will see that the stairs will be linking Level 1 and Level 2 together. You can also see how many risers will be on the stairs. Adjust the number to 16. In the Options bar, change the width to 915. Click once to start the stairs. Click again when you see 8 risers. Then move the cursor and create the second run. The landing will be automatically created. Select one of the run and zoom in. Use the move tool by using shortcut MV. Click on the end of the stringer, then click again to snap on the wall edge. Repeat the same process for the other run. Click the green check to complete. We will now show a couple of tips to coordinate different levels together. Go to the Level 2 floor plan view. You can only see the stairs. Activate the underlay of the view and set it to Level 1. Level 1 will be visible in grey. If you create a new element in this view, it will display in black. This is helpful to coordinate levels together. Another helpful tool are the reference planes. You will find it in the Architecture tab. In this case, we create two reference planes where we will eventually set up a structural column. If you go to the level 2 view, the planes will also be visible. You can set the dimensions or align in relation to the planes. Let's go back to level 1 and create a ceramic floor pattern. Create a new floor and select the thin finished floor type. Draw the boundaries and make sure to go around the walls and countertops. In this case, we use the pick lines tool. This will create boundaries based on existing lines and elements. Then, use other tools like Split, Trim and Align to complete the boundaries. When you are done, click on the green check to complete. The pattern appears, but it should be in the other direction. Use Tab to select one of the pattern line. Use shortcut RO to rotate the line. Type in a value of 90 degrees and press Enter. You can use a line on the pattern line to adjust the position. Another issue we are facing is that the floor seems to be above some 2D components like the sink and fridge. Simply select the elements and set a value of 1 to the elevation from level parameter in the instance properties. If you eventually upgrade the 2D components to 3D families, this issue will be avoided entirely. Now we're going to annotate the drawing. First, we will create tags. Go to the Annotate tab and select Tag by Category, or use shortcut TG. In the Options bar, deactivate the Leader option. Click on each door and each window. The tag will indicate the width of the door. For the windows, it indicates the width and the height. The tags appear to be a little big, so which is the scale of the view. Create a custom scale of 1 to 75. The tags now appear a little bit smaller. You can set the tags to vertical if you wish. Now let's add some dimensions. Go to the Annotate tab and select the Align Dimensions tool, or use shortcut DI. You can use Tab to toggle among different options when multiple elements are close together. To complete the plan, let's add a dark wall pattern. 
Go to the Visibility Graphics menu, look it in the View tab or by using shortcut VG. Scroll down to the Walls category. Click on the Cut Pattern. Set the Solid Fill to the Background. Set the Dark Gray Color. Click on OK. As you can see, all walls show a dark gray pattern. The floor plan is complete. You just need to place it on the sheet. Go to Sheet A100. Drag the Level 1 view to the sheet. You will have to adjust the crop region of the view. Double click on the view to go inside of it. Click on this little icon to, to activate the crop region. Drag the blue dots around the floor plan. Then click on Crop View. Element outside of Crop Region Limits will disappear. Some texts are still floating around though. Simply check the Annotation Crop parameter in the Properties to make the text disappear. Fill out the information on the sheet, like project name and date. You are ready to print. Congratulations, your floor plan is complete. Remember that Revit is a 3D modeling software. Everything you have done in floor plan has also created a 3D model. Revit Pure Basics is a beginner's course for Autodesk Revit that is made to be simple, fun, short, and efficient. The course includes a gorgeous ebook PDF, bite sized premium video tutorials, a Revit template to help you get started on the right foot, a modeling challenge to test what you've learned and a one-on-one -on -one chat support on our learning portal to answer any of your questions about the course. On the first part of the course, you'll learn to navigate Revit's user interface and use any of the architecture modeling tools. On the second part, you will learn to create and control views in your project. On the third part, you will annotate your drawings with tags, dimensions, text, and lines. On the fourth part, you will create sheets, export your files, and collaborate with your peers. In the final part, you will learn some advanced features such as schedules to extract quantities and create cost estimates. The course can be accessed on our learning portal, where all bite-sized videos also have a text and images description. It is easy to reach the content you want to learn. You will also get a link to download the gorgeous Basics ebook video, which is made to be fun and easy to follow. Thousands of users use the original version of our basics course to learn Revit and advance their career. This new version includes new chapters, such as how to collaborate on BIM360, identify the different kind of families, and unleash great free plugins. The course can be used by individual users, or you can train a group of people and get discounted rates. To get your copy of basics, go to revitpure.com basics or check the link in the video description.